as you remain there in your chairs if you'd like to be seated you're welcome to if you want to join us around the altar that's always appropriate as well and let's bow together and look to the Lord in prayer this morning Father we thank you for this wonderful Lord's Day that we can gather together and how wonderful it is to see that the Lord's Day has fallen on the first day of the year we can start this new year in your house and in worship to you and we thank you Lord for all that you mean to us and how your grace has been with us in great and wonderful ways in 2022 and just like all the previous years you've been there and you've walked with us and you've held us you've provided for us and comforted us you've healed us how great and how awesome you are and we worship you we praise you there's nothing greater than to worship you to lift up your glorious and your wonderful name for you are more precious than silver and Lord we love you today and we bless the wonderful name of Jesus we thank you, Lord, that in this new year, as we enter into 2023, you're there. You're already ahead of us. You know what lies ahead of us, and your grace will be sufficient. Your presence will help us and cheer us. Your provision will supply all of our needs, and you will be our light our direction so father i pray that you would have your right of way in this service be with every one of our online church family today that's worshiping with us i pray that you would go where they are and viewing this service and that you would encourage them and lift them in these days we trust in you we depend upon you we pray today for our own uh, family, the Full Woods in Idaho, and the home going of Aunt Darlene, that your presence would be there with Wes and all of his children and all the grandchildren. Lord, would you just reach down and just speak peace to their troubled hearts this morning? And Father, we are glad that we can cast all of our cares on you. There's people in our church family, Lord, that are sick and need your healing touch, need your strength today. And we just pray that you would be with them and meet those needs today. We love you. We count it a joy to be the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. For it is in the powerful the mighty name of Jesus that we pray who taught his disciples to pray and he said when you pray say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and to give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if you would, let us again uh, affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed and, and know even as we enter into this new year, this is what we still believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is good to have everyone with us today. We welcome you and uh, those who are worshiping with us online today as well. It's good to have them with us too. Next Sunday morning, you have an opportunity to meet the new district superintendent for the Alabama North District. Reverend Arnie Wilson will be in the service next Sunday and will be preaching. And so you'll have a great time uh, getting acquainted with him next uh, this coming Wednesday we kick back into our normal schedule with uh, discipleship going on uh, downstairs this coming Wednesday as well as next Sunday morning the class here in, in the sanctuary and so great things are happening we're looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us for 2023 I remember a long years ago when I went to my first church as a pastor. I was counting up when would I be 66. And when I was doing that then, I said, oh, that is just eons and eons down the road. If I live to February, I'll be 66. That just doesn't seem possible. But um, appreciate your prayers for uh, our, our 
Aunt uh, Darlene, Wes and Darlene, you, you would love Wes and Darlene Fullwood. And uh, that's Dana's uh, aunt, or his, uh, Wes is her uncle, her mother's brother, and his wife Darlene. And Aunt Darlene went to be with the Lord last night at 1148. She went out uh, before the new year started, so she started the new year in glory. And uh, Wes and Darlene came to serve with us when we were pastoring in South Carolina, and they were just a delight and precious folks, and, and so we're praying for the family that's there in Idaho and, uh, and, and Brother Wes. So we're going to ask our ushers, if they would, to come this morning and wait for us as we uh, receive the Lord's tithes and our offerings. And the Lord bless you in the faithfulness of your giving, and God richly bless you. And uh, Brother Clyde, would you pray for us? Like a blind man I wander, so lost and undone, I was a beggar, so helpless, without God or his son, then my Savior. Explain it. 
grab your microphone. They never heard this song before. And Austin bring me down a hair. I'll bring them in on the second verse and they can join me, all right? All my yesterdays are buried in the deepest of the sea. That old load of guilt I carry. It's all gone. Praise God.
church, we were saying Happy New Year to each other. And Wallace said, I just don't know what this year will hold. I said, no, we don't know, but we know who holds tomorrow. When it said, I'm free from the fear of tomorrow because I put my trust in Christ. And I know that he's in control and that he knows what's best. And I'm going his way. Well, if they'd have just waited a few years, I'd have traveled with them some, but uh, I was uh, five or six when they started, but anyhow, and that wasn't too bad, except they brought some of their own rugrats later on that traveled with them, so they didn't want to add one more. <laughs> uh, good to see you. God bless you. Take your Bibles, and let's look together in Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, we're looking beginning at verse 13, we're talking this morning about a pep talk for a new year, Matthew two thirteen. when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. And then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. And then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child life are dead." Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea, instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. I can think of no better way for us today or in the beginning of this new year, think of no better way than for us to gather in worship to the Lord. I don't know about where you were raised, but where I was raised, where I came from, We used to have what we called watch night services. Some of you may have been in a watch night service. It's a time that we would get to the church about 8 o'clock. There'd be several songs, lots of different preaching and testimonies about God's goodness in the past and how we were looking forward toward the new year. And then about 11, 11, 15, 11, 30, We would all be at the altar of the church and we'd take communion together. But at 12 o'clock when the the ball would be dropping in New York, we were praying in the new year. Anybody ever been to an old-fashioned watch night service? Now, I used to go to those, used to have them in my early ministry, but that became my anniversary. So I didn't do watch night services corporately. 
So, uh, and believe it or not, she's been putting up with me. And a waiter asked her yesterday, how long have you been putting up with that man? And she said, 29 years, of which five were the greatest of my life. <laughs> but we need to have a little pep talk. And to help us in the area of a pep talk, there is truly, legitimately, a kindergarten class in Hillsburg, California, that runs their own free hotline, which they call Pep Talk, P-E-P-T-O-C. You can Google it. It's legit. The number is 707-998-8410. It's a great way to get inspired by the enthusiasm of kindergartners. They're giving you life advice. The teachers who created Pep Talk, they were inspired to do so after witnessing how their young students kept such a positive attitude in the face of hard times. And after all, over the past couple of years, these kids have been through COVID-19 pandemic. They've been through the California wildfires. They've seen changes in their family circumstances. But in through it all, they remained very positive, very hopeful, and very energetic. And so the teachers thought that they needed to learn from these kids, and so they created Pep Talk as a hotline. If you call Pep Talk, you're going to hear the following options. It says, if you're feeling mad or frustrated or nervous, press 1. If you need words of encouragement and life advice, wouldn't you like to get a little life advice from a kindergartner? Press 2. If you need Pep Talk, press 3. And you're going to get all kinds of positive affirmations from kindergartners. And it's a great thing because children, remember, look at things through fresh eyes. I discovered when Brianna was first born and just beginning to walk and, and how, how you know, in tune to everything she was. And we'd walk by a, a blessed weed and she'd pick it up and go, oh, look, Daddy, a flower. Okay, it's a flower. But children learn to see the beauty in lots of things that we just kind of take for granted, right? And when we look back at this past year, a lot of us have experienced unexpected joys, but indeed we have experienced unexpected challenges. We've experienced unex unexpected heartaches. And because of those things, we're not the same people we were 365 days ago. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit in March 2020, it seemed like the whole world literally was shut down. Airlines all over the, over the world were grounded. It was a very scary time, as you well remember. And we had no idea when we were starting into the pandemic you know, just kind of uh, give it two weeks, lower the curve. Remember that? Two weeks went into two years, did it not? An interesting story comes to us on March 23, 2020. First officer pilot Chris Dennis, a pilot for Delta Airlines, he was told when he finished his last flight, on that day to park his airplane in a Delta storage lot at a remote airport facility in a California desert. No one knew when they would ever be flying again. And before he completed his duties, First Officer Dennis, he took out a piece of paper and he wrote a note of hope for whoever ever would find this plane in the future. It said this, Hey, pilots, it's March 23rd, 2020. We have just arrived from Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's very chilling, chilling here to see so much of our fleet here in the desert. He says in this note, if you're here to pick this plane up, then there must have been light at the end of the tunnel. 
Amazing how fast it changed. Have a safe flight bringing it out of storage. Now this pilot could not have known that in the next few months to years that COVID-19 would literally spread around the world and kill more than 6 million people. He could not have known that this plane would ever fly again or come out of storage. But he had a hope. He trusted that the pandemic would end and that he and his fellow pilots would fly again. So he just left this note as a note of encouragement to whoever would bring this plane out of storage. Well, it happened on June 21st, 2021, 453 days later. First Officer Dennis, he stored that ship, that, that plane in the desert. And then 453 days or 435 days later, First Officer Nick Perez was assigned the job of bringing that same plane out of storage. And as he went through all of his checklists, his mechanic said, why don't you check the tray table on the flight deck? And that's where he found this note from First Officer Dennis. You see, he thought about his mindset now, 435 days later, compared to what Officer Dennis must be thinking in that time before. But he said, I am in a good mood, I'm in good spirits, and I'm very optimistic about the future. You see, when we look here in this passage of Scripture, it did not look too good for Joseph, for Mary, and baby Jesus. This story in Matthew 2 comes to us just after the Magi from the east had come to worship the baby Jesus. And uh, the Magi left, and an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said to him, Get up and take this child and his mother and escape to Egypt. It looked like very dark and bleak days. It did not look like it was going to be a happy time. And so it was that uh, Joseph immediately got up and obeyed the word of the Lord. And tragically, Herod realized that the Magi were indeed not going to lead him to the baby Jesus. And as we know, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and in that vicinity who were two years of age and under. Can we imagine a world where a powerful king can do something so evil just to hang on to his power? But what this story tells us is that God understands your life and my life. And he understands that there are some times that happens, things happen to us, circumstances arise that are clearly beyond our control. COVID-19 was beyond our control. And this situation that Joseph finds himself in, it, he couldn't do nothing about it. It was clearly a circumstance beyond his control. But even in the midst of things beyond our control, God understands. God sees. God knows. We are not immune to disasters, are we? We've learned that. I've learned that you don't make any plans since COVID-19. We're planning a family vacation. Who knows what can happen in the next few days? We have no idea, church, what the next day may bring for us. We're not immune to these things, and sometimes things happen beyond our control. But the only thing that we can control in the midst of that is how we respond. How do we let those things shape us? How do we view those circumstances and those situations that happen to us? We have learned in our society, sadly to report, we have learned how to become an expert at being afraid. People are scared to death these days. They're afraid to go around family members. They're afraid to go around people that maybe don't uh, uh, think like they do, or they're afraid just to sometimes leave their homes. We've, 
we've learned to be afraid. And sadly, that's how many people respond to tragedy is fear. Zig Ziglar says fear is false evidence is appearing real. But fear will make us turn into anger. It causes us to give up or just simply withdraw from the world. But all of these responses do not let us see how God is still God and he's working out his purposes in creation. Did you know COVID-19 and all the things that we experienced in the past two or three years? None of it took God by surprise. Nothing takes God by surprise. And he understands our circumstances when they're beyond our control. And so this story gives us a commentary on human nature when we see the evil of Herod. We see that. But it also gives us a message of hope. Because God was still behind the scenes. He's working out his will. He's working out his purposes. And that's what we need to understand, secondly, that even though we are experiencing sometimes, and we may do it again in 2023, circumstances beyond our control, God is still in charge. God is still working out his plans and his promises, even in the worst of circumstances. And sometimes we need a message of hope. We need to hear hope. And Matthew, Matthew tucks three notes of encouragement here in this story for us. Three places where we see that he reminds us of the times of God's plans for his people and of God's promises to his people. He is reminding the people of Israel, never lose hope in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord. What's the Bible say? Trust in the Lord. With all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. I heard Maura Higginbottom testify and and say that verse many, many times over. Trust in the Lord. Matthew helps us to see that there is hope even in the midst of this dark story. Matthew, three times in this passage, writes some variation of, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. The holy family would escape to Egypt. That was prophesied by Hosea more than 750 years earlier. The tragedy of Herod ordering the death of children was prophesied by Jeremiah more than 600 years earlier. And numerous prophets declared that the Messiah would come from a humble, lowly place like Nazareth. So every time Matthew points to a prophecy in this passage, he's saying, remember. And we need to remember today on January 1, 2023. We need to remember that God is always faithful and he will fulfill his promises. Amen. Always, not one of God's promises will fail. In tragedies, in injustices, in circumstances beyond yours and my control, we can find hope in this, that God is still in control. God is working out his plan. God is working out his purposes. And he has promised to keep us and bring us through. And that brings us to the last thing we want to know from this passage. And that is, despite everything that goes on, no matter the problems, the tragedies, we can, as a people of God, move forward in faith and confidence. We must not get frozen in our fear. We must not get static We must continue to move forward, be the people of God, do the things of God, and live for the glory of God with faith and confidence, no matter the circumstance, because God is with us. Is that not the story of Emmanuel that we've just been celebrating? 
God with us. And because God is with us, we can move forward in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. Joseph responded each time an angel of the Lord said to him, Go, take this child and his mother. And he acted on that immediately. Even when he was afraid, even when he didn't think God's plan made much sense. Have you ever thought maybe God didn't know what he's talking about? You ever wondered that? God, are you, are, are you sure? If you leave the choices with him, he'll take you places you never dreamed. You would have never gone. He'll lead you to do things you didn't think you could do, and it's going to be okay. Joseph, he stepped out by faith. He continued to move forward in faith and confidence that God knew best what was to be done. He still obeyed God no matter what. He acted in faith no matter how difficult his circumstances appeared. And beloved, that says to me and to you today that we can move forward in that same spirit of faith and confidence because we know if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Wouldn't that be great if that were true? Well, before you call the DS and said our pastor lost his mind, it is true. Amen. Amen. And his message rings clear to you, and it rings clear to me. God's with us. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. You want me to tell a little story on Austin? He can't do a thing about it other than turn my microphone off. When uh, in 2009, Dana's papa that you hear me quote quite a lot uh, papa went to be with the lord uh, the first week of november in 2009 we had just been down there to see him a few months prior to that and papa went to be with the lord and he, he fell going to the dinner table at 105 years old on halloween night and so when the ambulance drivers arrived to pick up Pat Paul, and he was 105 and he couldn't hardly see and he couldn't hardly hear thunder, but nothing affected his mind. And so he said to the ambulance attendants as they came into the house to put him on the stretcher and take him to the hospital, he said, well, I do not know if I am your trick or your treat. But off he went to the hospital. And because Austin was pretty young in 2009 and had been very close to his great-grandfather, not everybody gets that opportunity, but he did. So when Papa died and went to be with the Lord, it really bothered Austin for a long time. He, he was one of those that, you know, it's hard to go to sleep after that because he kept thinking, am I going to die? Who's going to die? What's gonna, who's going to happen? What's going to happen next? And so he got his little Bible out, and he laid it on his bed. And then he got another Bible out and laid it on his bed. And Dana got him a little bracelet he still has today. And it's Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. And help you, and I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. And that message is for you and for me today as we go into this new year. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Isn't that a great promise that we can fully march forward in faith? Despite consequences, circumstances, situations, trials, tragedies. The thing about it is, church, we have to have the faith and the obedience 
of a Joseph. So when the angel of the Lord, when God says to us, do this, move here, do that, go this place, that he, we do it. The Bible said he arose. He took the child and his mother and departed. He acted on faith. We don't have to understand all the tomorrows, as Ginger said. We know who's holding our future, amen? And we have no idea what this year holds for us, and aren't you glad we don't know? That, that's a blessing that God holds that information from us. And I don't expect that pep talks are going to work in most of our difficult circumstances. But I do know this. God's plans and God's promises will never fail. And because of that, I know that we can move forward in faith and trust that God knows where we need to be, what we need to be doing, and let these things begin to shape us to be people of action, obedience, heed the word of the Lord. Let me ask you this question in closing. What would you do for God in 2023 if you knew you could not fail? If you knew there was no possible way you could fail, what would you do for God in 2023? Do you currently have the faith and the trust in the Lord as Joseph did in this story? He heard the word of the Lord. He acted on the word of the Lord. He responded immediately. Didn't argue about it. Didn't take it to a committee. For God so loved the world, he did not send a committee. Amen? They're an evil necessity. But they're not going to get you out. God will bring us out. And you know what, church? I believe if we will operate with faith and confidence in Almighty God, as did Joseph, then he'll take us to higher planes than we ever dreamed possible. We can step out on faith and know that he's going to hold us by his righteous right hand. And there's no need to fear. There's no need to worry. God will supply all that we need. Oh, his promises are new every morning. Amen. Amen. What do you want to do for God in 2023 that will take you to a higher level, a new plane, a greater trust, more effectiveness, more fruitfulness for the glory of God? Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you today that we do not have to believe small or dream small because we don't serve a small God we serve a big God who's able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all we could ever hope think or imagine and so Lord I pray that today you would help us to make a choice that we're going to step out by faith and trust in the unseen hand of God who's promised to go with us to supply our need, to give us grace and strength. We thank you today that we can lean on a mighty and a wonderful God who wants to take us forward in faith to higher ground, to new days of blessing, to new experiences, to grow deeper with God this year than we've ever been to trust you more to put our doubts and fears aside and trust you more and more help us to choose that and let you have your way in us and through us thank you for who you are and what you're going to do for us we're trusting you and believe in you in the name of Jesus, shall we stand together as we sing? I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as my Lord would come. Lord, let my feet on fire ground. Lord, lift me up. Lord, let me stand. Thank you.
on God's holy word, I challenge each of you. Give to the Lord your life anew. My friend, make the choice because he waits for you. This is the moment of truth. Now walk with God and he will be your dearest friend wherever you go and in everything you do. And may your life reflect his love to everyone. Walk with God and he will walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy New Year. Thanks for being here. God bless you.